and welcome to Scene Through Glass and welcome to Monterey Car Week. Now it's been an early start this morning, I haven't had my coffee yet so please forgive my grogginess. Anyway, you find me in a car park getting ready for the start of the Quail Rally. Just to bring you up to speed, we drove up here to Monterey from LA yesterday, taking the Pacific Coast Highway, the PCH, the whole way. Now, I'm just going to show you some clips as I'm talking here, but don't worry, there are full travel vlogs coming from the US leg of Drive the World, but I had done PCH before and we actually weren't that lucky with the weather at times, so that's why I'm kind of summarising it quickly right now. There's a Daytona Spider pulling into the car park. That really summarises how ridiculous the Quail Rally often tends to be. One person who always takes part in this rally, which happens quite early on in Monterey Car Week, is my good friend Phil, who not only has made an appearance during Drive the World already this year, but seems to always feature during Car Week itself. And the car that he's taking part in the rally in this year is pretty damn special. Anyway, time for coffee and breakfast, and then we'll find Phil. Morning, Squire. Morning, morning. How are you doing, I thought you had uh, maracas up there for a second, <laughs> but no. Park up. I need coffee as well. I can tell you need yeah. it too. Now, as often as the way with the Quail Rally, I'm always running against time because it's incredibly strict when it comes to departure and arrival times. So I'm just trying to get everything together and ready so that I can follow the cars I want to follow, which is realistically Phil in, yes, the 911 Safari. So some of you may have seen that he recently collected or commissioned this car. He's been doing some pretty ludicrous activity with it already, but he shipped it over from the UK for Car Week and I'm obsessed with the thing. I think it looks so cool, so brilliant and so different to some of the other cars that he's had. But it is the Quail Rally and as I mentioned with that Daytona Spider, there are other ridiculous cars here. Right now I'm pulling in behind uh, the Gen 1 Ford GT. Uh, there's a Ferrari here which I need to find out what it is. It's like a 166 but it's not. It's not a 250. I don't know. It's beautiful. Uh, we've got a roof yellow bird. Um, what else can I see? Uh, there's a GT2 RS. I don't know if it's taking part on the rally or not, but it's awesome because it's all liveried up like an RSR car. Uh, we've got a Maserati Ghibli, we've got an old Maserati Le Mans car, um, DB11s, Ford GT, I mean I'm forgetting, there's that many cars I'm forgetting what's here, but yes, anyway, I think I'm now in a relatively good position uh, to get us rolling out, and apparently it's quite a long drive to our first stop, um, but we're just going to enjoy ourselves, be amongst these ridiculous cars and celebrate Monterey Car Week! I'm going to get Phil to explain things a little bit better when we have a chance to sit down or stand up or walk around the car, but a little bit of background. Uh, that is not an original 911 Safari. Many of you will know that back in the day, Porsche made Safari 911s for the things like the Dakar Rally, and they were always in sort of iconic Rothmans-esque liveries and looked incredible. That car was commissioned by Phil via a company called Tuttles. Now, I don't know Phil's exact intentions with that car. You'll know from previous videos with him that he's big into his classic motorsport. He owns a Stratos as well. And I do think he does want to do some genuine rallying. Anyway, I think we're sort of nearing-ish our first spot for the day, which is a sort of refreshment break before we then head on to the lunch area. Um, so I'll hopefully walk around the car a little bit there with or without Phil um, and just continue enjoying following it. Because how cool is this too? I would say rally inspired Porsches, because obviously mine's not, it's, yeah, it's inspired. Well, that was an 
absolutely beautiful drive today, I have to say, following the 911 Safari up through that sort of forest section. But we have now arrived at the Wings of History Air Museum. As the name suggests, it's a museum of vintage airplanes. Planes are really big in this part of the world. So yeah, we're going to have a bit of a nosy around. Also show you some of the other things that are here, because now we're out in the bright sunshine. You can get a proper goosey gander at some of the other cars taking part in this year's Quail Rally. Uh, I did sort of uh, prelude the fact that this isn't an original 911 Safari, this is a commission via Tuttle's, right? Exactly. So why, when, how, begin? So, you guys remember my Stratos, and the Stratos kind of gave me this itch for competition cars and to do all of these amazing rallies that I've seen for years. Um, and after I did the Tour Auto last year, I came back and I just went online and said, what are the best events you can possibly do? And if you haven't done it, I highly suggest you do Tuttle Porsche on YouTube. They build these cars and they go and do the Safari Rally. Um, the Safari Rally was an old WRC event and now they do it as a classic rally option. It's pretty spectacular. I said to Richard, I met him, I said to him, I'd like to do a car with you. And um, this is basically a standard car with a whole bunch of little trick details that I've added in a nice paint job. In terms of uh, trick details, in terms of livery or mechanical bits? A couple of little mechanical bits that I've made that I wanted, but otherwise, if you tell him you want a safari car, this is what you get. Uh, so we started with a long hood 911, so I knew I wanted the old RS style. So it's a 73 car, he has a barn full of these things, and you choose the right donor car for, for the project. So we went with the RS style ducktail, it's a long hood which is, I, I think is a very pretty form of 911 for it. Of course we've got the Roo bars on the front and rear for Africa. Um, so wait, for Africa? You can't just casually throw that out? Well that's the Safari so, Rally. Okay, so it all happens <laughs> in Africa, in and around? So it'll be nine days across Kenya and Tanzania. Wow. Um, four days of competition, one day rest, and four more days of competition. Wow. We do three and a half thousand miles. It's going to be something. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And unsighted. So this isn't like a traditional rally where people are calling out, third, fourth, one, eighty, six, five. I don't know what that means. No one but calls that out in any <laughs> rally, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm so pro-level. <laughs> but yeah, basically it's an unsighted rally. You get two lips, and uh, I have an amazing co-driver who's been teaching me. Um, so we've been out in Wales testing the car, we did a rally, unfortunately I added a little accident and rolled it over, but we rebuilt it about eight days later, big credit to Tuttle. Um, and yeah, it's just amazing, we're going to go and do this rally, it'll be brilliant. Um, but then again, I also wanted a car that was more than just a competition car, because I could have painted it white and just gone to Africa. But, you know me, I like to make things a little bit different challenging maybe <laughs> but I took the 911 GT1 livery from the 90s that ran at Le Mans there was a Zack Speed car which was sponsored by a German beer company called Jever which if anyone has any contacts there please tell Sam I'd love to get <laughs> sponsorship from beer companies um, but yeah we took we took British Racing Green Mars Red and Grand Prix White the car was really distinctive for having uh, this red and white checkered roof it works well with the Hong Kong flag which I'm always happy to support and uh, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, it looks absolutely incredible. I was saying, on the road, it takes a while to get used to seeing a safari, because it's like a Frankenstein 911 at the first, but then when you start to realize what it is, and then you see yourself going off-road in it immediately at any opportunity, you go, ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but absolutely. come take a look inside. It's you know what, actually, I'm going to save the inside and the details for lunch. Gotcha. I think for now, we'll uh, enjoy <laughs> looking over it, enjoy the drive to lunch, and then we'll do the details there. Hey, hey. Well, this is something a bit different for a car rally. Uh, you now find us shooting clays. I've never done this before. I'm slightly nervous. It's going to be my first time holding a shotgun, but we have an incredible instructor, Irene, here, who's been briefing me, and Vicky. Vicky's also going to be me. There's Dan. He's first up on the station. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a different day out. So wish me luck, people. I'm going to make sure I aim at clays and nothing else. Definitely not the cars. Left foot forward. Get it in the pocket and push it over to your face. Okay. And you're gonna to look to the left. And when you're ready for the target, you put your finger on the trigger and you Hey! Oh. Hi! I mean, that was right. Hi! You wanna quit for the day? Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> 
That was your instruction. <laughs> that was all your instruction. You just made me look really yeah. good. <laughs> right. Shooting over. But a different kind of shooting has begun. Camera shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you find me inside the safari. This is so exciting. It's pretty exciting in here. I cut you off earlier talking through the details of the interior of this car. It's immaculate. That I have to say to begin with. Like everything is displayed in the most beautifully immaculate way. Why, thank you. It's I think Tuttle would thank you too. I'm sure they would. <laughs> uh, how much of this layout is just what you get with the car? How much of it have you... So basically, this is what they do with the car. I added a couple of things like uh, the Bluetooth stilo above your head. Um, extra What's that for? Uh, so that's for headsets when we're rallying, so okay. we can talk to each other. But I can also make phone calls. So I had my mom on a rally. I was reading the, you know, that's amazing. Notes and communications out to her on a phone call. That's amazing. <laughs> um, we've got the OK and the SOS board above your head that okay. we can pull out if sure. we need to. Um, we've actually got oil cooler lines running from the front through the car. Uh, to the engine. Wow. Um, you've got a horn actually down that there. That one. That's, yeah. That's so I got horn. a foot horn. That's. Can, what happened? Can I? Uh, you can. Yes. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. You've got rally trips and all kinds of things. Everything. We've even got wheel guns. You've got take wheel out. guns, which I love. Which is brilliant. Like Formula One wheel gun. <laughs> <laughs> You've got water bottles. I mean, you're kitted out for a full-in adventure, which is what you're going to be doing, uh, I suppose. Now, we've come to a private road, uh, not too far from where we were before. Uh, we don't exactly know what this road's going to be like or... Because you haven't driven it in this car, right? I've never driven it in this car. I've typically driven it in big off-roaders. Okay. But, uh, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Well, we're going to see how we go. So I reckon let's start it up. I have no idea if you're going to be able to hear us. Oh, did I start these ones outside? <laughs> I'm not very well prepared today, am I? Give me two seconds. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I did. Sorry, after all that harness stuff. There's a lot of harness. Yeah, you, you've forgotten how bad I am at YouTubing, haven't you? <laughs> Wait, two seconds. If this one's on, the back one's definitely on. It's on! Get uh, harnessed in, buddy. Uh, sorry, Take your I'm, time. Hurry I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not like you've got a really busy week. Yeah. No. yeah. No. <laughs> You're so casual. You have so much time. Uh, sorry, two seconds. Three. Two, one, rock and roll. Hell yes. Oh, wow. Oh, we're straight into it. We're straight. Whoa. I said, don't feel like you have to show off. We'll edit that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be a lot smoother in the video. Boy, there's a lot of... How do we explain this dust then, Phil? Yeah. Oh, it's not a lawnmower. Is that actually still a track here? Almost. Almost. Oh. How are we doing this in a porch? Now, is the key momentum? Sure. Uh, I mean, I think so. Oh, that's a big tree. That's a big tree. Excited. I hate giving you compliments, but my, you're a mentalist. It's good fun. And we did that in a Porsche. Yeah. Sure. That's the crazy wow. thing, isn't it? I mean, you have the sound of a 911, you have the feel of a 911, and yet you're driving over trees. <laughs> we drove over a tree, dude. Maybe your GoPros are even still attached. Fucking fingers crossed. Just, oh, hello? <laughs> Anyone in there? How does, like, does it feel... Controllable? It's, it's honestly the most amazing thing is the suspension. This is, uh, I think they're called XTC, the suspension company. Okay. Um, you don't get an immense amount of feel out of the roll and all of that, but 
it's just so planted and it does what you would expect a car to do on a road, but on this kind of terrain. I mean, that wasn't terrain. There was no track there <laughs> whatsoever. You're like, oh, I've been up here in SUVs. No, we just made a track because you <laughs> ate hedgerows. Uh, anyway, my mind is blown. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get some photos up here because this is amazing. Maybe we can even try and get the drone up. I don't even know. Let's but most it. importantly, I'm going to clear these bushes, these bush off me, and then check the GoPros are still here. <laughs>